There it is. Boom. Yeah. Recording. There it is. Check that out. Check that out. Yeah. Well, I've, this is exciting. Late I've, night little hang. I'm I'm very very professional about this. I was gonna send you guys. I don't know if everyone can see the link. Yeah, I can see it. To the agenda. Oh, I like it. I I I have a very very lengthy agenda. <laughs> as Look as all that. as all my agendas on this podcast have it's that they're very loose bullet points strung together <laughs> with anecdotes and forgot forgetting rules. <laughs> Hey, you know, but that's every war game ever is just going with the flow and forgetting rules. That's that's okay. Yeah. Access denied for Chris. Here. Well, I got you. I got I got it. Check this out. I need to add you to the whole. There's a whole folder, Chris. Let me see if I can. I got I got a strategy. Apparently, I know a lot of Chris's. Here, but no, check this out, though. I got a, I got a, I got a strategy. Use that email address. That that's like my default. So here, Chris, you know it might be better. Oh, come on. How how would you like it in PDF form? Boom. Nice. The power also works. of portable document format. Or but file. now you will also have access to the entire folder, which has all sorts of other random things. That I've which is collected cool. over the years. <laughs> which is sweet. Yeah. But hey, they didn't come to this podcast to listen about <laughs> <laughs> the minutia of of organizing everyone so that they know what we're talking about. This is Dead Zone the Podcast. <laughs> Woo! Welcome to the Dead Zone Podcast. Dead Zone is the sci-fi table top I'm one of your hosts, Brian. <laughs> and I'm Scott. And I'm Chris, although I'm not a host. Y- you are today. Yeah, I'll <laughs> say you are today. Welcome to the club. Yes, uh, those of you who uh, may be joining us or, or have joined us before, uh, we've got a couple new voices on the show uh, as as things have been kind of changing for it. And uh, and one of the the last time we kind of introduced Scott and I'm I'm pointing to my right. We're not going to do a uh, camera on this show. It's it's still radio only. Um, maybe one day we'll change that if we get enough requests. Yeah, we'll do it that way. Yeah, we'll do a poll. Well, a social a social uh, uh, media poll. <laughs> and. Uh, but yes, also uh, joining us is is one of our good friends uh, and fellow Pathfinder, Chris. Chris Beetle, would you like to uh, introduce yourself to yeah, sure. the fans of the show? Hi, everybody out there in internet land. Um, <clears throat> my name's Chris. I'm, a, as Brian said, I'm a Pathfinder with uh, Mantic. Um, I know we had talked about me giving a little history. I'll try to make it brief because I'm <laughs> old, and so there's a lot of history there. Um but uh, I got involved in gaming in elementary school with Dungeons and Dragons, moved up to Battletech, um, eventually was introduced into uh, Blood Bowl, my first game's workshop game, um, which led me to eventually playing Space Hulk and then second edition Warhammer 40k. Um, nice. And that just opened the doors to a bunch of different games over the years, a uh, bunch of different role-playing games, a bunch of different war games, and then um, just, oh man, Four years ago, three years ago, just three years ago, I got. Three years ago. Yeah, three and a half. It was the beginning of a uh, twenty-one. I got um, basically introduced to Kings of War again. I had seen Second Edition and didn't really care for it. 
Um, and to be fair, I didn't give it a fair, like a good shake either. Like I, I, I kind of glanced at the rules and went, ah, I got other games. Um, and then third edition Kings of War, I, I jumped into both feet. Haven't really looked back. Um, got mm-hmm. playing playing Dead Zone and Firefight from that. Um, helped play test a little bit of Warpath. Um, p- played one game of Armada. <laughs> <laughs> um but it is my main war games right now although i also play a little bit of battle tech um and a little tiny bit of marvel crisis protocol and my new obsession of the week is um frost grave and star grave nice because uh, i've never gotten over my role player roots like i still run I'm, I'm currently running three different rpgs like every two weeks i run three games um and um i love telling stories i love building narratives in game and i just really took a serious look at frostgrave and went wow this does everything i want and uh we just did the first game of that on tuesday um nice. and i i didn't play in it i just i which is my which is my mo i didn't play <laughs> in the game i um i helped you two observe. other people play the game and <laughs> uh <laughs> Um, and help them with the rules and everything. Uh, but it's definitely on the rotation list for like our next campaign. We're doing a one page campaign starting this week and they go for like four weeks. Um, and then uh, Frostgrave is next on the agenda. So solid. Very nice. And, and, and Chris too, like, uh, like you have, have served as a great hub of of kind of the the, the southeast uh, Michigan uh, mantic scene, really. You, you've been you've been organizing all sorts of events for Dead Zone, for Canes, for uh, doing some firefight as well. Uh, so it, it, it's you you definitely had have, have had a major impact on, on keeping the scene growing and al- alive and growing in uh, in the southeast area here. So that's yeah. I was going to say the same thing, Brian. I was like, I don't know where we would be without Chris. Like, he's like, really, he's really down, you know, burying the lead here. <laughs> yeah. Like anyone in the Detroit area, just so you know, there's a really gracious host that has a museum of miniatures that would be oh, yeah. willing to have you play any kind of game. That's, that's the, uh, <laughs> that's the story and, of Chris. <laughs> And and we'll we'll uh, so we have we do have a hobby table section where we talk about what we've been working on. Uh, so I won't I will I'll leave that for you, Chris. Uh, I won't spoil sure. your sure. painting projects. You can speak to it maybe then. <laughs> it's a is a good opportunity to to share uh, that that side of your uh, your involvement in the hobby. But uh, but yeah, no, you you've been a, a great buddy of ours, uh, and like we said, a very gracious host. You you're often like, hey, anyone want to stop in? And you have uh, like, is it two? You can do two full boards of kings, or yeah, yeah, like I got two four... six by four. Yeah, two six by four tables right now. It's it's nuts, and it's always great uh, getting together uh, with you guys to to game, and um, it's always a fun time. Uh, and so one of the other questions that I have here, I, I we, we've covered kind of the, the main bullets of, of, you know, what is your gaming history? How did you get kind of into Mantic? So the last one I, I always have to ask is, what is your favorite faction in kind of the, the sci-fi warpath side of things? Oh, on that side. Um, yeah. Got to be careful with this question. Night Stalkers <laughs> at the moment. Yeah. We um, had a very close game. Well, actually, yeah. no. That's you. You kind of destroyed my rebs. I should. I should rephrase <laughs> that. Uh, the one at Excel. The, the I, one um, at Excel with the beta. I felt <laughs> bad about that game. I, I mean, and not like denigrating your ability to play at all because it was so much in no. dice rolls. It was yeah. almost a game. I think is what. Uh, like, the Night Stalkers were such a hammer, and through um, a weird series of uh, just lucky die rolls on my part. A series I, of unfortunate events. <laughs> I, 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 I killed like almost a third of his models before he got to go. Well, I, I know I brought zone, a friend with me. And, and when after uh, Chris, I think you had to go early or something. I like did. That. I had a work thing come up. Yeah. And yeah. My buddy Aaron's like, dude, I don't know what to do against Night Stalkers. <laughs> <laughs> Brutal. And, and I, I had, like, I wouldn't say I, 
I don't run a strong reps list. Uh, uh, so it, it is it is one of those things where like I kind of I like to I do get enjoyment out of like running these kind of like themed lists and like these oh, yeah. character driven lists, characters in my head that no one else cares about. But uh, like the big part of me then like the honest is to get good with that list, right? To figure out how to play it. And uh, that was their first encounter with the Night Stalkers, and oh boy, were they not prepared! <laughs> <laughs> it it was it was a scenario that favored the Night Stalkers greatly. We started very close to each other, and I brought a very melee centric list, mm -hmm. and then I won the recon roll and got to move some of my guys up, and then yeah. I, I was the first player, and I and I got the extra activation, and yeah. so and I had an extra move, like I got the extra move too, and so like or extra fight and i just had like i i had two models go and kill three of his models and yeah. when you're playing a game like dead zone where you only have like 10 models on the board losing 30 percent of your force on before you even get to move a model is really big <laughs> it's a little rough big deal yeah so it was um that was a that was a rough game but um not to like bring up the the evil empire too much but like what i liked <laughs> about night stalkers is, is back when i played 40k i was a really big tyranid player um mm. not that you guys would know that looking at my collection at home or anything no uh, <laughs> <laughs> i would never know and um night stalkers not necessarily in turn but like in the style of play that they have remind me a lot of tyranids mm -hmm. and um it's just that and and i guess in some ways they're that like from beyond the edge of our galaxy horrors that we don't really comprehend and just a little bit of that eldritch horror feel in there as well and i really i really took to the faction they're they're some of mantic's newest models they're some of their best models i've seen them put out they're fun mm -hmm. to paint uh, and they're fun to use on the table and so that's like that's like the everything right like they're they're nice models that are easy to paint and fun to use so the trifecta yeah absolutely and so uh, with that, we can we can continue to reminisce about times that Brian's uh, lost fight. But we, can also, <laughs> <laughs> we can we can move on. So, uh, or if if there's anything else you'd like to to kind of share with uh, with folks about about you, Chris, you know, you're welcome to. Uh, uh, to, to, so everybody doesn't think that you know any anything bad here. The first time Brian and I ever played Dead Zone, he kicked my butt. So. <laughs> Did, didn't we do we play two games and you won one and i won one we're just we're just bringing up the first game brian you don't need to you don't need okay. to <laughs> yeah. just the first it, uh, is gcps versus veerman yes yeah no that yeah. that was and that was that was a great time too because you you posted on um i'm trying to remember which message board you posted on saying like hey i'm were you moving to the area at the time yeah, I think I had jumped on uh, the Kings of War Fanatic Facebook group, and maybe yeah. maybe the Michigan Mantic group as well, because I was getting ready to move to the area. Mm -hmm. And that that that's kind of how how uh, Chris and I met is is uh, you know posted, hey, I'm I'm interested in the games, I'm I'm in the area, and I was just like, well, hey. <laughs> He, at the time, Scott, you were just up, you know, down the street. Yeah. So it was like, you, man, you're in glory luck. days. <laughs> and, uh, and 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 the scene has definitely grown, kind of like thousand percent uh, around the three of us, if you will. Like, there's there's a great set of guys that that play uh, all these all these Mantic games, uh, and and we just love to hang out, love the game, and uh, yeah, so great. Uh, it's just it's just a great group of guys yeah you know what i could think of is i remember we were growing this thing brian like it was kind of mm -hmm. like like a, a few of us who initiated like okay let's get like a detroit thing going and then chris shows up you meet chris and it's like hey we got this like really cool guy we should all like we should all like start like hanging out and so then chris you mentioned hey i want to hang out and then it's like hey i'll come <laughs> over like i didn't know who you were you just invited me over and it's like all right, right. i come down and i'm like dude this is legit like like you're you're trying to game like that's just what you're trying to do but also you smacked me that day with your nameless i will never forget the, the nameless destroyed me in that first game <laughs> and 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 playing against him in canes is is no question uh you're you're <laughs> I, i've never beaten chris in canes <laughs> i don't think i have either actually 
I do lose games, contrary to, to the reputation that's being artificially inflated here. I, I don't know about that. I, <laughs> I I don't know if I've ever seen it. <laughs> Nate and I played the first Kings game I played after I moved out here. I played Nate, and he uh, he kicked my Ratkin's teeth in pretty hard. Really? Okay. Yep. Yep. I didn't know you had Ratkin. <laughs> He's they're my they're my fun bad. army. They're, they're my fun army. they they were um once again they're a, a holdover from uh old Warhammer. Cool. And um I rebased them for for kings, put them on multi bases. And it's literally a list of not like I'm trying to optimize anything. It's like these are the models I owned. So this is the <laughs> list I can build. <laughs> hey, that's how uh, that's how it starts, man. That's how you get mm-hmm. into kings. That's the beauty about yep. it. Yep. Totally. Speaking of new games. The all the latest craze is right now is the Halo Flashpoint, and see that's that's how I smoothly transition us to topics. <laughs> Smooth, uh, which is awesome. with a hammer. <laughs> and so. Um, so I thought, you know, it's it's really great. Like the 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 games are hitting store shelves, uh, multiple stores in our area. We lucked out. We've got at least two carrying I, I, uh, RIW hobbies and Excel hobbies. Uh, both have their uh, Halo Flashpoint stuff in stock. I forget if Pandemonium. Have, I don't yep. know if yeah, I've seen Panda so. post it yet. Okay. Yep, they have. So it, so does um so does Golden Rhino. And Golden Rhino, yeah. So. If you are if you are looking for Halo Flashpoint, the <laughs> southeast side of Michigan has a whole bunch, uh, which is saying something. Like the 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 stock for this stuff has been just flying, um, and so if if you can get your hands on it, definitely definitely do so. If you have an interest in this game, we obviously do uh, because it is very closely linked to Dead Zone, one of 100%. our our absolute favorites. And so I thought it'd be kind of neat. Uh, there's obviously a lot of differences. Uh, it, it's, it's kind of crazy to think about how many differences there are with Halo. Uh, I was actually just flipping through the book myself and I'm like, oh, I'm going to have to reset in my head all of, like the dice modifiers <laughs> because they're all very different uh, in Halo, such as like charging nets you two dice uh, slamming into a wall is four dice uh, on fours. Um, so like there, there's little tweaks. And so you just kind of, those of you maybe making that transition or hopping between the games between Dead Zone and, and Halo, just try to uh, be aware of that. It, it's worth kind of looking through those rules for those uh, those finer details. You know, we should make a Dead Zone to Halo conversion sheet like like <laughs> all if you do all the this differences in dead zone it's this if you do this in halo it's this but but there's a reason for the tweaks though i mean the tweaks mm-hmm. make it feel like halo and so like it absolutely it's good like to me it, it 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 doesn't it's not clunky in any way it's just a different mode it's like a mod is one way yeah, that I would yeah. describe it. None of none of the ones that i've i've like encountered so far are ones that i'm like man i you know, this was be- like so much better in Dead Zone. Why would they ever change it? Like it it does like it is a different game being played in yeah. that respect. Like so there's I mean, the fact that everyone has like recharging shields now like just that. adds a adds another layer of like combat you have to do. The amount of dice you usually have to throw at each other uh, kind of needs to be in big pools now. Uh, because of how tough these guys are, the Spartans are are you know built for tough, as they say. They're just built way, different. Way tougher. Built yeah. different. <laughs> the recharging but, uh, shields was one of my favorite parts of the game. I thought that oh, yeah. was a really cool thing. Yeah, uh, Scott. So Scott and I uh, just recently got to, to get together and play uh, a, a quick game of it uh, while while the the newborn was there. Yeah. Thanks for dealing <laughs> with that, out. by the way. Yeah. Oh, it's all good. And, Pizza, uh, newborns, and Halo. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Having having the the soundtrack on in the background, it was great. Um, Chris, have you gotten a chance to to play much, or or uh, you've been running some demos? Yeah, I I played um I played one game back in August. Okay. Um, 
and because Excel, the local store here, got a got a demo copy at Gen Con, and mm. so we we broke out and played it. Um, and it was a lot of fun. And then I, since then, I've all I've done is um, is run demos. Yeah, I did two different demo days so far. Nice. And and it sounds like it's like the the store owners there really love the game. I was yeah. I stopped in the other day to pick up the the Master Chief uh, paint set because I'm like, well, if I'm going to be doing demos, I better have Master Chief. <laughs> uh, and so if if you guys are interested, pick them up while you still can. They only have yeah. I think four or five copies left. I heard he's a tank. Um, my oh, coworker yeah. got to do one of the demos, and he was like. Dude, Master Chief just like just destroys everybody. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, that's fitting though. It has that has to be that. Yeah, he he yeah. Uh, he's even like described in the so like in the context of the game, he is classified as essentially a living legend, right? Uh, so he counts as he's worth two Spartans. If oh you, wow! When it comes to like a list building uh, uh, setup, uh, and you can only have one of him. It's in the rules. <laughs> yeah. Can you have only one on the table, or so, can two so teams have two like a clone of Master Chief? It, it does. It does specifically say you can both have uh, the legendary character. One is obviously though the uh, just a an, a very talented imposter. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Has to be. Can um can he respawn? Yes, he can. Okay. Just like in the campaign. Yep. Just like <laughs> unless unless you're playing Halo 2 on Legendary, <laughs> in which case <laughs> you die. That's it. Um, but one of the things I did want to highlight, so obviously there's there's a lot of little tweaks and, and stuff, but I did want to highlight the scenarios because they are pretty wholly unique to uh, the, the Halo game right now. Uh, there, there's not much... There, there's, there's some that are close, in, in the Dead Zone side, I think Dead Zone has quite a few scenarios at this point. Uh, whereas uh, Halo's going in with with kind of five, I believe, standard. One, two, three, four, five. I can count. Much to the surprise of everyone on the show. Uh, <laughs> and so to to start with, I, I thought I'd just kind of run through them and kind of speak to like some of the neat uh, uh, elements of them. So we're starting off with uh, Slayer. Woo. And uh, Slayer. Slayer. And uh, we're going to do that all the time. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I think um, we did do that when we played. Yeah, we, we just we talked did. like that guy. <laughs> Kilimanjaro. Uh, so so with with uh, Slayer, which, which honestly, I kind of lean towards calling it Team Slayer. Um, it is more like Team Slayer. Uh, in, in the fact that there is a red team and a blue team facing off uh, against one another. But uh, I do, I think friends of the show, I think Dev ran it. And I think a few other people have tried it now where they have played it as like Slayer, where it is a free for all, everyone against everyone. Oh, that sounds fun. Uh, so like four I, people? Yeah. Uh, that, that would I think, work. I think that'd be a blast. Yeah. I don't see um, how that would, that would slow things up at all. That would be awesome. No. And um and so the 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 big thing with uh, Slayer, the the main objective is to to get kills, right? So uh, short game is the first to four, medium is about the first to eight, and a long game is the first to twelve. And um, and I'm gonna try to read this without looking away from my microphone, so you don't <laughs> lose my my poor audio as it is. Um, <laughs> And so with with the the startup, you're you're kind of in the lower right corner uh, for for both sides. Uh, the bottom four uh, squares is kind of where you deploy from. And then around the map, there are three uh, respawn points for your side. So like blue team has one. One is on each side of the board, minus the one that your your deployment's actually on. Uh, and so what that Wait, means there's three per team There's six, there's three, there's three per team. Yeah. So basically on directly opposite on the other side of the board is one of the respawn points. Now that I want to highlight <laughs> because uh, it is one of the things that immediately sets this game apart from dead zone is uh, not only do you respawn, but with some of these things, you can respawn right behind your enemy. <laughs> which I think is just it's fun. a lot of fun. 
I think we each did that like twice. Yeah. It's like, oh, I have to. It's the only it's the best place to respond. It it really makes it like a really fun kind of arena battle uh, uh setup. And so uh that's that's just a, what makes that scenario just very dynamic is how many re- respawn points they are, where they're positioned on the field. And um you know, there's also like there's four weapon drops uh located on the field as well. So those weapons uh, spawn, I believe, at the beginning of each round. A new one will will pop up. Uh, not not putting all four down like we did <laughs> that game, but that hey, was fun. That was, it was fun. a fun that way game. to to dive yeah. into all the uh, the different weapons. So that that's uh, Slayer. It's it's fairly straightforward, um, but in that way that it's like it's still a very dynamic uh, and and uh, kinetic way to play the game. And I think it's it's a great way for people to to you know dip their toes in because uh, it's it's just the the objectives are straightforward, but the scenario itself leaves a lot of of tactical consideration and just a whole lot of fun uh, throwing dice. So so yeah, that's that's Slayer. Woo. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have Oddball. And uh, so, so this starts getting into some of the stuff that's more themed for the video game, uh, as you might say. So the objective is to locate the flaming skull on the map and maintain possession of it for the longest period of time possible. Uh, so, so on the map, you're kind of starting in the corners of either side. Your respawn points are also this time closer to your your uh, deployment zone, and then there's a um, there's four weapon drops and the oddball marker itself, uh, which uh, for those of you with the um, the recon edition, I think it's just a little token. I think the Spartan edition actually comes with like a hard plastic uh, uh, object that you can use for like a little trophy. For, like, like it's a little skull. <laughs> and um and so the, the how how oddball works is that uh, you can pick it up by moving uh, into within or out of or through the cube containing the oddball marker if there are no enemy models in that cube. While a model is carrying the oddball, that model may not fire any ranged weapons, use any items, or make a sprint action. If the model is performing a sprint uh, when they they go to pick up the ball, they it ends their their movement right there. Um, while carrying it, they uh, they have the follow weapon profile. Uh, oddball, close combat range, AP2, ESD1, lethal 1. Uh, so much like in, in the video game, it is a flaming skull that you can beat people to death with. <laughs> nice. That's kind of the same stat line as the sword, except you just a don't little get the bit. lunch thing. Yeah. Uh, the oddball is dropped if the model carrying is killed, although, uh, unless the model is killed in an assault, in which case the enemy model fighting them has the chance to take it, uh, or, or it just says that they take it. So it might not be the option of may take it. Uh, oddball is also dropped if the model carrying it is moved by force, such as knockback or frag or pinned. So any of those, uh, statuses, if you will, uh, happen on your guy and you drop the ball and it scatters. Um, if it scatters off the board edge, it actually re, uh, respawns in its origin spot. So unlike unlike in Dead Zone where things kind of bounce off the, the imaginary wall, kind of surround the whole thing, uh, in these scenarios, a lot of times they actually uh, just pop back where they start from. Uh, so this is this is where it's kind of interesting. A lot of dead zone, it's kind of end of the round scoring for kind of these progressive scoring ones. In here, one point is scored by the side holding the ball at the end of each enemy's activation. So that's, if you can different. if you can snag it quick in the in the round, and your opponent has all four guys left to go, and you manage to hang on to it, you've just netted yourself four points. How many points do you need to win? Oh wow, that's uh, and and so there's also one point is also scored with the odd ball is used to kill an enemy model in an assault action. <laughs> that's legit. Uh, so the game ends immediately. Uh, this is another kind of change with the the Halo uh, rules is that um, the 
a lot of these scenarios, when the, the total points look that you're looking to score is reached, like the game ends. It's It doesn't uh, typically go to the end of a round. Uh, but the game ends immediately when one player scores 11 points. If neither player scores 11 at the end of round six, the game ends with the player with the most. Um, and if it is a tie, you can you can end in a tie or both players can agree to continue until uh, the next point is scored. So, uh, like it, it. yeah, it's a it's a it's a fun one there. That's, that's uh, interesting. Yeah, it's definitely a different type of mechanic than you see in most of the scenarios in like Dead Zone or anything. Absolutely, and this this is where it kind of like like um what I've kind of mentioned before like one big piece of it that is just kind of the flavor of the game like uh with the the halo game a lot of these scenarios are kind of that arena battle multiplayer feel right it, it is kind of that uh that head-to-head -head thing as opposed to something like dead zone where it, it it definitely has that maybe more narrative driven kind of you're in the middle of a battle uh or some kind of encounter um so Obviously, the respawn also is a big element of that too. Right. Uh, but yeah, so that that's oddball. Uh, next one is capture the flag. Uh, so this is this is a tried and true classic of the Halo franchise. And uh, in this scenario, you're trying to compete to capture a flag from the enemy base and return it to your own. Um, players will need to defend their own flag and try to keep, capture their enemies. Uh, so deployment on this one is the whole back line for each side. There's respawn points and what are considered flag drops uh, where, you're, where you're taking the flag on either side of the, the field. So uh, not on the, the back line, but on the sides. Uh, each side has a pair of, um, of uh, respawn points and where you're trying to return the flag to. And then kind of near the middle on each uh, each side's board half is uh, where their flag starts. Um, and so again, in the um, recon edition, these will be little tokens, uh, just little card tokens. But the um, the Spartan edition, I believe, does have like some little hard plastic flags. Yep. Sweet. And uh, yeah, and then. Kind of looking through this. Uh, <laughs> rearrange the terrain if necessary to ensure the flag cubes are equally accessible for movement purposes. So that should be, <laughs> shouldn't have one flag on the top of a tower and the other one <laughs> uh, buried inside. Yeah, just good building. luck. Yep. All right. So the enemy color flag is picked up by moving into, through, or out of the cube containing the flag marker. And only if there are no enemy models in the cube which contains the flag. Um, the flag is carried like an item, so a model can only carry one other item while carrying the flag. Uh, yeah. If the model carrying a flag is killed, the flag marker is dropped and will scatter. Uh, you may not interact with your own color flag. If the enemy flag is carried into a cube alongside the friendly respawn markers, uh, as shown on the map, you will score one point. When this happens, the flag immediately returns to its starting position. And so in this way, it's kind of interesting. Like one, like two things that make it a little different than the video game uh, is for, for one, the flag doesn't, you can't return it by standing near. Uh, that, that was a mechanic in some of the early Halo games is uh, if the enemy, like you can kind of reclaim your, your flag while it's out there in this scenario uh once they've moved that flag from its starting point it is it is just going to be <laughs> wherever it scatters on the battlefield until it's claimed um which is which is i actually kind of like i think it's it makes it very dynamic and um and uh as, as we can see the uh the other thing that's kind of curious about it maybe it's because because we have the rules in oddball in the video game, a lot of times you pick up the flag and it becomes a melee weapon and you're kind of stuck using that um, as opposed to, uh, you know, being able to like shoot uh, your gun. But in this case, it's you're carrying it like an item. So it's like strapped to your back or something, I guess. Yeah, but I can think about those guys in the game who would pick up the flag or the ball and then drop it to shoot. 
throw it, drop yeah, it, yeah. It, go, and then it's just telling you, pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up. <laughs> uh, and so for the, the victory on this one, it's the first player to three points immediately wins the game. If neither player has scored three points after eight rounds, the game ends uh, with the player with the most points that win. Uh, so okay. not a not expected to be a very high scoring game. No, I so we um we I ran this scenario at one of the demo days, and um I think they played four turns before one of the guys had to go, and one side had scored one point. I I can believe it. Like uh, in the grand scheme, like if you look at the starting point, so the flag starts one, two, three, four, five, at least five spaces, five cubes away of where you need to return it to. So you have to, and it's on the opposite end of the battlefield. So you have to go one, two, three, four, five, six cubes one way at minimum, and then five back the other way. Well, you got to get it to a respawn point, which is yeah, like yeah, they're 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 a good. It's a good jog, and it's a good jog. It was uh, it was difficult, but if you if you could time it right, you would have a guy return the flag. And have another guy in a position to grab it right away mm -hmm. and then try to like just you know kind of relay race it that way See, yeah that, it's kind of what i learned about halo even with slayer is like man this would take a while getting to four but then once you realize oh i just need two guys to kill one this could be fast yeah it, like it's, it's the same thing with capture the flag you just learn how to maneuver the team you know yeah absolutely like it, it's it's kind of strange to think about like in in dead zone there's there's a strong element where a lot of of models can kind of you can kind of do a model exchange if you will like i i can attack totally. you and maybe take a guy off the board you can attack me and take a guy off the board in halo like you really do kind of have to commit like to to one guy to really like to kind of spreading out your attacks uh has, has diminishing returns because it just takes longer. You, you you only have four guys that you're playing with, uh, so you're you're limited on a number of of actions, if you will, attacks you can make. And if you're you know part of this is you're going you're having to fight through shields, which will start regenerating, <laughs> and and four health and and two armor. Like it's it's uh it's uphill if you yeah. don't focus. Yeah, you uh, can't your, your have effort. like one of the guys isn't going to carry you like you mm -hmm. need to, uh, you have to have the guy. All right. I'm going to figure out how to get the shields down, then come in for the kill. Like mm -hmm. uh, you, you need all of your team to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which, which I think is definitely a strength of, of the setup and especially the starting uh, four characters that you get the four Spartans. Uh, I totally. think they, they, they all have a, a really great balance. Uh, but yeah, I, I really like the, the capture the flag scenario. Uh, I I think it's it's another one that uh, could pretty easily translate to uh, back to dead zone um, and still kind of be familiar and fitting. Uh, but obviously the trick is you start when you start losing guys that don't respawn in dead zone. Uh, so <laughs> so but you might have more of them to play with is kind of the the trick there. So um, but no that it's. Again, it's the scenarios are that respawn definitely plays into how you how these scenarios are set up and how well they'll they'll play. And I, I really like that. Yeah, the respawn makes it a unique game. Mm -hmm. Like that is for sure the most unique aspect about the game. All right. So next up, we have strongholds. Uh, strongholds. <laughs> uh, this one I kind of like. It, so it, it's kind of more of a, a tried and true Dead Zone esque game where there are victory point uh, tokens on the field at, at preset locations. Uh, the thing that's neat about it that makes it adds a little extra flavor is that the uh you you have victory points one through four but you only have three locations on the map 
And so what you do is um, you randomly pick the tokens face down and place them in their uh, objective spot. And that essentially dynamically generates where like the four might be or the three or the two, the one might not even be on the board. Um, and uh, and so this one, you, you're in an L formation for your deployment zone uh, with your respawn points kind of behind you on, on either side. Uh, interestingly enough, it, it, it changed it up in that uh, you are now on like the left side of the map instead of the right. Typically, a lot of dead zone are, and even the halo setup. So you start in like the lower right corner is kind of your origin of, of most deployments. Uh, but this one, they, they decided to flip it and put it on the other side um, for fun. Yeah, I was going to say, I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just to, to break up the monotony of it all. Yeah, why not? Um, all right. And so uh, how how the scoring works uh, is something we're pretty familiar with, is at the end of each round, score VP shown on each VP marker. Uh, if you have a model in the cube, but no enemy models there, uh, the markers themselves are not picked up or moved. And so the victory conditions, the game ends at the end of the round uh, where one point one player has accumulated VPs that are double or more than the total points on the board. For example, if the game uses objectives one, two, and three, uh, the game ends when each player reaches 12. One, two, three adds up to six, double that, that's 12. Um, I can do math. <laughs> <laughs> Not just because they wrote it out for me and I could read it right from the, the script. Uh, the player who reaches the total, uh, the total is the winner. Uh, if both players reach the threshold at the end of the same round, then the game is a tie, even if one player had more VPs than the other, which I, is kind of an interesting uh, thing there. And, uh, and it, it otherwise goes to round six. Uh, if, if no one's been declared before, then it's the player with the most points. So that, that's where it's kind of weird. It's like it ends on round six if one of you has more to the player that has more points. But at the end of the round where you got enough, <laughs> it could be a tie. Um, Interesting. But yeah, yeah. I, I, I like the idea of the kind of randomized uh, uh, victory points. In, in the based on the location like the the where these objectives go on the map is preset and they're all pretty equidistant from one another um so there there's not like one that's way out in the middle of nowhere that could be worth more or less uh they're all like along the middle of the map uh along that kind of diagonal axis um so i i, I just i always kind of like a little randomness uh, that then, you know, uh, you don't know going into it and have to adapt as the the scenario unfolds in front of you. So that's a really cool one. I, I like that one. So did you say it, it changes at the beginning of every round or at the beginning of the game? Just the beginning of the game. Like okay, it sets okay. at the beginning of the game and that then it's locked in. But uh, but yeah, so so you have four four victory point tokens. You only use three. Um, uh, which which could lead to to fun combinations of like the one, the two, and the four could be on the the map. In which case, like you know, there's the the high the high scoring the one or on. or the other ones. Yeah, it, it's it's it adds a really fun flavor uh, in a, a very simple way, which I always love. That'd be and interesting. The, like if if the four was on there and the two and the one, I mean, the four is worth more than the other two put together. So absolutely, <laughs> yeah, that that creates an interesting dynamic on the on the field. Mm -hmm. And that could be at the far end of the field. It could be right in the middle. <laughs> like uh, it's it's uh, it's a pretty neat way to play. Um, and uh, and and I think the other thing too, like looking at at these scenarios is like a big change that's different is so much of dead zone is victory points driven based on kills. And so the fact that, like these are almost purely objective driven um, uh, in, in that respect. Like you can't win by killing your opponent more, more times unless you're playing Slayer. But then again, that's the core objective of it. Um, 
So uh, yeah, so the last scenario that's kind of in this uh, this first uh, run of Halo Flashpoint is stockpile. Um, this one this one's uh, kind of different. Uh, so in this scenario, two teams compete for power seeds located in the middle of the map. Players need to collect the power seeds and deposit them at their base to score. Uh, so this one also, we're back to the lower right corner this time for an L-shaped, uh, like a, a, a four by four L-shaped uh, deployment zone. And then all along the middle diagonal from one corner of the board to the other are there these uh, power seed markers. And uh, and then at the the top part of your deployment zone, is where the power seed station is located. Um, and then in this way, th this is probably the more, most verbose of the, uh, the scenarios. Power seed can be picked up by moving into, within, through, or out of the cube containing a power seed marker. If there are no enemy models in that cube. A model may only carry one power seed at a time. While carrying a power seed, a model may not make a sprint or shoot action. If the model was performing a sprint action when they picked it up, it ends their, their movement right there. While carrying a power seat, a model may throw it as an auxiliary action. Um, I'll have to, to double check like what auxiliary actions classify as. Probably Is that just one free? of you. I don't think it's free, but I'll, I'll clarify that in a second here. Uh, so you choose a target in at uh, range two and then make a three dice range test needing two successes with no modifiers or rerolls. Uh, if the test is successful, the power seed lands in the target cube. If the test fails, the power seed scatters from that target cube. Uh, so basically you can grab these things and just huck them <laughs> <laughs> at least two cubes away. Um, in true halo fashion. Yeah. And then, uh, uh, during an activation, a model carrying a power seed may place it down in their cube as a free action. Um, so you can you can technically, as long as you start carrying it, um, you could drop it, I guess. Oh, uh, so you, you can't go grab it, then toss it. If it start your activation, holding it. So so you can so you can move up and and grab it. Uh, as part of your move action, uh, and then because it's it's you picked up by moving into, within, through, or out of a cube. Uh, honestly, it probably should have been worth clarifying that that's just part as part of like an advance or sprint action. Right. Um, but um, but you basically like you can then make a as a second action this auxiliary action to throw. Um, uh, throw it right away if you wanted to. Uh, there's there's just the thing like you could drop it if if you started the round with it presumably. Uh, you could drop it as a free action in in the cube that you're in. Make a shoot action and then move and pick it up again. That could be a, a way you could do it. Uh, <laughs> A power a power seed is dropped in the cube of if the model carrying it is killed unless the model is killed in an assault in which case the enemy model involved takes the power seed instead if it's not already carrying one. Power seed is also dropped if the model carrying it is moved away by force, knockback, or frag, or pinned. So again, those those conditions uh, will will make you drop whatever you're carrying, and 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 then it will scatter. Uh, and da, 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 da. If a power seed scatters off the board, it, it spawns back to where it started from, or you randomize, like if you can't remember where it came from, you can random <laughs> randomly pick which uh, which spot it's respawning in. Well, you just, um, is it other eight? You just roll a D8? There's, there's eight of them, yeah. Okay. You can just yeah. roll a D8. Um, and a power seed, so like the goal, uh, yeah. Yeah. A power seed is deposited automatically when the model carrying it moves into or through the cube containing the friendly power seed station, or if it is thrown into the cube with that. So you can, you okay, can, you can call can. this thing. <laughs> 
So Through with oddball, we have we have Halo rugby, and with this, we have like a weird form of Halo basketball. Got it? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's about it. Um, with 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 a bunch of free throw <laughs> challenge, <laughs> uh, buzzer beater. Yep, yep. Uh, power seeds be picked up by your. So power seeds may be picked up uh, from your opponent's power seed station and carried away. If picked up by an enemy model, that power seed no longer counts as deposited. Power seed stations may not be picked up or moved. Uh, so the victory for this one, so your opponent can go into your basketball hoop and grab the ball that you scored with already <laughs> and snag it out of there. That's uh, kind of cool. If at any time one player has five power seeds currently deposited in the power seed station, they immediately win the game. Otherwise, it goes to round eight with whoever has the most. Okay. Okay, that's a that's an interesting scenario. There. Yeah. 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 The, a, a lot of moving parts, but also not. It, it's it's ultimately kind of simple mechanics we're establishing with simple goals. It's just we kind of needed there. There's some some extra stuff about like not being able to like take a and shoot action and stuff like that. Um, but. Yeah, it's not confusing by any means. It's it's not it's not confusing once you you kind of read through it. Uh, it's just it's just wordy. Uh, I kind of wanted to look up that auxiliary action thing then, because that one's that one's kind of new. Uh, da, 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 da. That's a Halo unique action. Yeah, gives the stacks, the rules. Where are my actions at? It's always fun trying to. To, to look back at the beginning of the book and it's like, wait, where, where, where are basic things? Uh, and it's yeah, like, sorry, how if basic I, if is I'd it? I've been thinking I would have, uh, I would have grabbed a copy of my rule book. I could have helped you find it. Eh, it's all right. I won't, I won't spend too much time or the uh, future Brian can worry about it. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> future Brian problem. Doing the, the magic of editing. We'll fix it in post. Uh, I, I did not fix it in post. Uh, this so an auxiliary action is a short action. Uh, it's required by, for some scenarios and special orders. It also used for some keywords. The effects will vary, and the specific rules and effects of the auxiliary action are described in the scenario. Note that the model can perform two different auxiliary actions in the same term, but not the same one twice. So it's it's kind of a a new action classification. Uh, in Dead Zone, a, a lot kind of fell into like it's kind of like the special action, right? Yeah, I was about to say uh, yeah. special Zone. action. And uh, and I don't think they actually have special action as as an action in, so, in Halo. So maybe they just relabeled it, really. Auxiliary, yeah, I would say it's a relabel, but it's a little different because it's yeah, it's the catch-all for mm -hmm. all uh, whatever. Scenarios it's it specifically name. seems like it's scenario driven as opposed yeah. to like maybe other keywords. Or so instead of like abilities. making a new action each time, just do this as an auxiliary. It's just easy logic cleanup kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And and as a as a last bit to cover on on this, and then I think we'll we'll move on from here. Uh, I did want to take a peek at the advanced scenario setup stuff uh, because they they let you do the recon test. And it's you know five dice recon, uh, just on five up. So everyone's rolling the same. Everyone's got the same recon uh, in this stretch. But one of the thing that's kind of fun is the uh, the recon table is different. In that, uh, so you you roll the recon and the winner gets uh, to do a follow up a maximum of two. It's still kind of based on the difference. Uh, but if you won by one or two. You get to roll that many dice, uh, up max of two, uh, d8s to see what winning effects you get, such as looking at three item tokens secretly, randomly selecting a weapon token from the face down pile, and uh, and put it in the weapon drop cube of your choice. Place a That's additional nice. random item token face down in a cube of your choice. Sweet. Give one one of your models a frag grenade. <laughs> uh, two friendly models may perform one cube advance action. Um, choose one cube. All models in that cube become pinned. Two friendly oh, wow. models may perform a crouch action, but not mark them as activated. Choose one cube. That cube gains energy, a shield barrier, uh, for the first round and may not move, be moved. So those are some brutal. really, 
some really fun stuff on the winner side. Now, other fun thing, the loser also gets at least one dice of recon effects. Uh, so Same table? Smaller table. Okay, it's it's smaller a separate table. one. So they have the options of look at one item token secretly and then return it face down in the cube. One friendly model may perform a one cube advance action is not marked as activated. So the, the one model can do the, the free extra move. One friendly model may perform a crouch action. And you could give one of your, as the last one is, give one of your models explosive ammo as an item. Nice. So that's, uh, it, for those that are, are maybe have been having their fun uh, with just the basic scenarios, throw that, that part in there uh, and, and kick it up a notch. Uh, that's cool. That's cool. I like that. Yeah. So that's, that's a, the, not so quick run through of the uh, the Halo <laughs> scenarios and Halo Flashpoint. Uh, so th as you can see, like it's a lot of stuff that we haven't played in Dead Zone, which I think is is a big plus. Uh, it it would be that thing like if it was just kind of reskinned Halo scenario or uh, uh, Dead Zone scenarios. It's like all right, but the fact that they're they really are taken into account like that respawn mechanic. And and a lot of these other more dynamic elements that uh, that the Halo side of things can kind of bring to the table, I think uh, is is a really great start. Uh, you always want to see more. Five's not bad, um, and I'm sure we're gonna. I, I know they've got their their next like supplement book uh, coming out pretty much right around the corner uh, for doing like the list building and stuff. And I I'm I suspect. Uh, that we might be seeing some more scenarios pop up through there, um, but is it all a, of those another full book, or is it is it another like uh, the one that comes with the box set? I I think it's going to be I I, I don't have um, the the news item in front of me. I know the big element that it's going to be adding in is kind of the list building yeah. uh, side of things, so that you can. You know, not just go off of the the profile cards and and kind of um, playing from that, but that you can build your your Spartan fire team or or the elites and stuff. So I I think we'll we'll have some more dynamic uh, lists to work with. That'd be sweet. Nice. Yeah. All right. And so with that, I think we're gonna move on to uh, our hobby table section. But uh, the hobby table section is brought to you by uh, Corvus Games Terrain. Uh, they are one of the, the sponsors of the show, uh, designing great uh, 3D models for for all your Dead Zone or Halo uh, needs. Uh, they're all cubed up and ready to go, as well as uh, you know, there's some amazing stuff for you could use for Firefight or even other games. Like uh, Chris had me print off a whole bunch of stuff for his Marvel Crisis Protocol. Uh, Corvus has a, a great selection to pick from, as well as uh, their their recently announced Dvergold uh, Frontier. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't I don't speak Norse, uh, <laughs> and I I know uh, I know Steve like typed how to speak it uh, before, but I I can't read much like I can't do math. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it's it's space dwarf themed terrain for Dead Zone. Uh, printed off some of the sample ones, and I got one one cube and a roof. Uh, I actually have two roofs. Uh, when I went to print the second uh, cube, my printer crapped out on me, but that's because of my printer, not because of the the, the models. They're they're really great stuff. They they really have that that dwarven uh, uh, feel to them with all the or kind of would they be Norse or or kind of Celtic uh, symbols on them kind and of stuff. A blend. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. The the picture he's putting up of uh, his big project to kind of advertise it look amazing. Uh, so definitely check that out. I'll have the link in the show notes. Um, in addition, our hobby table is also sponsored by uh, Acid House Terrain, uh, doing cardboard uh, foldable terrain that is really easy to travel with, uh, really easy to store, looks amazing on the tabletop. Uh, definitely check out Acid House Terrain for all sorts of 
uh, terrain goodies, both sci-fi, cyberpunk, and fantasy. All right. And so um, as, as, as we kind of dive into it, so Hobby Table, we typically talk about like what we've been working on and uh, on, on our Hobby Table. So uh, to, to kick things off, uh, I've continued working on getting um, some, some forts, kind of two by two uh, by one fort set up for, for Halo. Uh, using Mantic's official terrain, uh, so doing some hard plastic. It's it's kind of fun going back to it after doing so much 3D printed terrain for uh, <laughs> for Dead Zone um, to to really kind of you know have these building blocks that are are really rock solid. Um, gluing them, you know, super gluing them together uh, this time, and and in some cases kind of shying away from using the clips to to connect them. Uh, a lot of times that can kind of create some gaps and it just doesn't seal as well and, and hold as a, as an object as, as good. But, um, but I, I like how they, they turned out. I was, I magically had enough to make two of these things, the identical, nice. um, to, to kind of be my mini blood gulch. Uh, and so now I just have to paint them up, uh, got them primed before the weather turned. So that's kind of the big trick right now is uh, it's starting to enter the fall winter season uh, real quick. We had our first snow here. <laughs> yeah, we uh, can go over like 70 degrees and then, oh, yep, yep. now it's 30. And, uh, and so uh, trying to get as much as I can primed so that I have some stuff that I can work on painting uh, during the, the winter months. Uh, it's never really stopped me from spray painting in my basement, but I don't encourage that uh for anybody uh no, it's not, make it's not sure to you. use a well ventilated area or at least a gas mask or something take care of yourself don't breathe in those fumes yes disclaimer um, nothing like priming models in a blizzard yeah so uh so scott uh what what have you have you been able to have anything on your hobby table lately or is yeah it... yeah i mean i've just been chipping away at these orcs still and then chris you and i still got to connect because i know you have uh, a few for me that you'd like me to take off your hands I do you I've, I've got yeah. a whole uh, uh 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 forces of nature box that i gotta get to you scott i forgot Another to give one? you when we got to yeah oh oh yeah you told me about this one and actually yeah. funny enough I have to start that army because the orcs were just like a nostalgia thing for October. Yeah. But there's not enough for a giant thing. But the, the actual like salamanders I have, I'm like, man, I actually got to get these going. Like, mm -hmm. it's time. Salaries are cool. Yeah. So I got the bases printed, and I just need to uh, um, actually put them together. <laughs> Excellent, Chris. What have What have you had on your hobby table? Oh man. Um... <laughs> So this or, is or a... do you want to do you want to tell people how you hobby? <laughs> so I I don't paint very often, maybe maybe a model a year or so. Um, yeah, I that's, uh, multiply that by a hundred. <laughs> yeah, so so this has been a big year of painting for me. So I finished my dwarf army this year, um, which I started September of last year, and that army without any upgrades or magic items. This is for Kings of War. Is like just over eight thousand points. Um, it's massive. And yeah, I need to get pictures of the whole army. It's just, it's, it's such like a, a, an intimidating prospect to like take the whole army out of the shelves and put it on a table and get photos and have to put it all back that I've just been kind of slacking on doing that. For, um, and maybe as a, as a quick disclaimer, for those that don't play Kings of War, typically you play around like 2000 points. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so this is, this is like four dwarf armies that I painted basically. Yeah. Um, and then I'm just putting the finishing touches. I have... Uh, just started the last model for my Rift Forged Orcs today. I started them back in August of this year. Um, and that army is, uh, when it's all said and done, is going to be pushing 4,700 points. It's uh, 150 models. And the model that's on the desk right now is the uh, the, the Stormbringer on the Wing Slasher. It's like a Wyvern type model. Um, but I just actually crossed my high water mark for most models painted in a year i broke my previous record which i swore i was never going to do <laughs> but i am sitting at 1104 models painted for the year right now and there's still plenty yeah. of time left <laughs> uh for... yeah i i have six models seven models that are probably going to get finished tomorrow 
Um, <laughs> and I'm doing a bunch of scenery projects for like other things too. Like Frostgrave has been an obsession of mine for the last week, week and mm -hmm, a half. Mm -hmm. um, and so like I have like I have like six Frostgrave scenery pieces on the desk right now that are going to get done tomorrow. Another one I just started. I have a Cronius for Forces of the Abyss. I have uh, what are they called? The uh, the new snake guys for Forces of the Abyss. Oh yeah, yeah. The Nagari. I thought they're just um, Naga. They, they, yeah, they, they, they threw some extra letters in there. Uh, <laughs> they're, um, those models are huge, too. If you guys haven't seen them in person, I they're not, they're but they man. look big. So, base is, what, 100 millimeters deep? Dang. Right? That's, like a chariot? a chariot? So they hang off the end of the base. No way. That's sweet. Um, okay. they are, and they are, they are, they're classified as chariots in the game. And so, oh, yeah. Okay, like, they're just snakes. They're they're huge. I did not understand how big they were until I assembled them. I bought the um, I bought two of the ambush boxes, and so I've I finished building the one ambush box. I painted all the berserkers, and I got the and they're they're intimidating. Like I have them primed up, and I keep looking at them. I'm like that is so much surface area. Like I'm just kind of intimidated on how to like where to start painting these models. Um, <laughs> and uh, and I'm I'm getting ready to start a new army, which is um, the Order of the Green Lady. So really. And, that's okay. going to be an all 3D printed army, though. Sorry, sorry, Mantic. Um, but I picked I, up. The... I mean, it's it's one of the non-official kind of. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I um, it don't matter. It's cool. I got the I got the prints from uh, Highlands Miniatures. I bought mm -hmm. their their STLs, and I, that's my dwarf army too. Is pr is primarily their models as well. I, I love that line. Um, oh yeah, they're they're gorgeous, and so they have like a, a pseudo Bretonia, you know. Knights of the Round Table type line, and then I picked oh, yeah. up some like water elementals from another company too on on my mini factory. But um, I have a friend who's printing all of them because I I don't three D print. Um, but um, yeah, that's a, that's the army for next year I think, and I'm gonna do three different color schemes in the army, so it's like a crusade of like three different households. I love it. <laughs> um, Very nice. It should be fun. I have I have the first two dioramic bases done. And then I have the first unit primed, but I don't know that I want to start it just yet. I kind of almost want to wait till next year. We'll see if I have the patience to do that or not. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, for everyone who's listening, uh, Chris is a machine. And <laughs> yeah. uh, in our Discord, maybe every other day or so, it's just, boop, here's a beautiful, amazing model that I that Chris started what yesterday yeah, yeah. <laughs> how long does it take like, you to do one model um Maybe so so i i speed paint more than i um more than i like like competition paint anymore i used to i used to competition paint a little bit but i, I speed paint armies is my my goal now it's all quantity over quality but i still want them to look nice like i go for they a, still look amazing. a high I end just, i go for a high <laughs> end tabletop and They're and zenithal priming zenithal priming contrast paints and speed paints are your friend when it comes to that style of painting. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I like I don't I try not to spend like on a, on a human sized model, I I really shouldn't spend more than 30 45 minutes on one um okay. to get it finished. Um on like a big monster like a couple hours at most. Um I, I just I don't believe in putting hours and hours and hours. It's just kind of a good enough level I get to because especially in kings, you're putting 12 plus dudes on a base like yeah no one's stopping and and you know giving the scrutiny to a single model you know they're, they're looking at the as the at the base as a the whole. whole unit yeah yep so you can kind of get away with uh with that or like the occasional sloppy mistake that you're like ah, oh, no one will ever see that it's on the back of that guy's leg i'll put him in the middle somewhere where no one will ever see it yeah it just uh, becomes not fun if you're like i have to i mean again unless you're into the competition thing which i think is great and it's an awesome skill um, but like if, if it's, it's about learning how to paint the army is the skill too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, it doesn't need it's, to it's be different. every guy's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's, it's very different game of like that. Like I'm going to paint over the course of this year, I'm going to paint five guys and have them look amazing and win, win awards, or I'm going to paint an army. Like it's very, it, it's, I mean, a lot of the skills can transfer over, but it is kind of a different skill set to achieve one result totally. or the other, but I'm, now that I'm doing some Frostgrave, we have individual models again. I'm starting to put a little more time, and I, I just built a warband out of Northern Alliance models. Um, and I have another warband I'm going to build out of a, a game from Cool Mini or Not called Wrath of Kings. It's 
died out a couple of years ago. I, I liked um, that game. It was a fun but game. yeah, so did I. So did I. And the models are beautiful. And so I had a bunch of models from two of the different houses of that game, and I kind of like grabbed enough together to be able to make a war band that's fairly thematic still. Um, and so that's going to be one of my projects I, I dig into probably next month. Uh, if you guys haven't played Frostgrave or looked at Frostgrave, I, I recommend it. I know this is like a a, a Dead Zone podcast, but <laughs> if you want if you want a fun fantasy skirmish game, uh, Frostgrave hits or, that. Or ner- ner- if you want to repurpose your uh, your sci-fi minis, your Maison Labs, oh, suddenly <laughs> Stargrave. <laughs> Stargrave, yeah, they're 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 just uh, it's a, it's a different style of play. Like Dead Zone is a is a really fantastic competitive game. The the scenarios are very well balanced. Um, like Frostgrave, Stargrave, it's it's more storytelling. The, the scenarios are not promised to be, out. and there's a lot of weird, random crap that can happen. Like there's literally wandering monsters and stuff in those games. So <laughs> um, you can you can see things where you're like, well, that's not very fair, but man, is it funny or tells a good story. Um, so it's it's a, it's a different play experience. Yeah, both are good for their own things, right? Yep, Absolutely. exactly. Play many meaning- games. Been meaning to to get into actually both of those. Me too. Uh, and it and I think I've also got like Rangers of Shadow Deep, uh, which I think <laughs> has a very I think it has a similar system. I uh, I know they're they're both D twenty based, but well, Rangers um, is like a solo thing though, right? Yeah, Rangers is solo one. Oh, okay. Um, but um, but yeah, no, it, it's it's a uh, it's always really cool. Like I think the trick is I always I, I always just kind of gravitate back to my comfort games like man i just love playing dead zone i think i'm gonna have a blast like getting people into uh halo flashpoint so yeah those models it, are great too i haven't painted yeah, them yet really but good. they're they're well detailed there's no assembly required uh they're bigger than the traditional models they are like mm-hmm. i think they're even bigger than 32 mil scale they're like maybe like pushing more like 36 38 mil scale. yeah they're they're a little big and I, I think i'm pretty sure that was intentional they're uh yeah we well, can get more detail into a bigger model right so yep. and like they got to be iconic so i mean the, the fact that i'm i have people that i haven't talked to in a long time reach out to me scott it's like it's the games you like but halo like i mean <laughs> they hit it they hit something like i know mm-hmm. they tapped into something that no one else is tapping into they yep, being mantic there, there's there they did really good with it i think mantic hit an audience that is is kind of um new to the world of tabletop gaming with hitting the video yeah, like game crowd. for sure and and seeing like the the people who have shown up for demo days there's been a fairly even mix of traditional tabletop gamers just looking at what the new game is and people who have never played tabletop games but they know halo um mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so it has i think it's i think it's going to expand their reach and hopefully We'll see uh, a few of those players come over into their other games as well. Absolutely, that's always well, the goal. Yeah, <laughs> yep. and I know the mantra that I hear, like I know, like guys on Counter Charge talk about this too. Like the hardest Mantic game to play is your first one. So once you get into one Mantic game, yeah. you get into all the Mantic games, and it, I feel like really Halo is. is the easy Mantic start. You know. Yep. Yep. No, it's it's great. Um, just so I don't um, do sci-fi a disservice here, I, I will mention too. I ha- this year I did finish painting my Veerman army that had started some time ago, and I also started and finished a Forge Fathers army this year as well. So I, I, all... I do paint those games as well and try to play those games as well. <laughs> well, what's kind of funny is that your Forge Fathers, the the paint scheme you went with, is very close to the one that I did for my Forge Fathers, which was like one of my second armies. Uh, okay. And yours is obviously way better. <laughs> but the, the like the silver and then like a red as like the main yeah. like uh, cl- cloth uh, color. Uh, so it's this is this is this is what I had in mind. Like you painted what I envisioned mine <laughs> could look like. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. Like most people's second armies don't look the best. You know, we're, especially when we're, you're using Meyer uh, Meyer brand acrylic paint <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> thin your paints thin your paints yep yep. Yeah, that's cool that's cool that's, that's the big thing i got i got my master chief uh primed black i'm probably gonna do uh dry brushing to to do the uh, i i don't want to call it the, like slap chop style like i know that's kind of like the steps are the same but like sure. 
uh, need to to try thinning my paints better to to better take advantage of the the whitening and layering that I'm doing. Uh, so I'm trying I'm gonna try to take a little time uh, to do to do Master Chief some justice. Um, but but it's it's so it's funny as we kind of wrap up the show. Uh, do you want to shout out for um, you know those of you that that maybe are are hearing us talk about Halo Flashpoint and are getting interested in these other games and stuff? Hey, make sure not only you you like, follow, and subscribe to Dead's on the podcast stuff, but do so on Mantix, uh YouTube channel and Facebook and Instagram so that we can push forward on the Reb social media <laughs> campaign going on right now. Uh, I had I had it listed somewhere else. We we have gone up by uh, about I think 200 YouTube subscribers actually since last month, um, or at nice. least maybe based on the metrics I had at the time. Uh, and then face Facebook as well as and uh, the the combined Instagram total there is is still kind of in that 95 percent to the goal. Uh, but they're they're looking for 20,000 YouTube subscribers or 75 Facebook uh, and Instagram followers uh, as as the overall total there, and they will bring the Rebs back. Uh, and so that's <laughs> uh, that's back. that's what we really want here. Uh, nice. And and oh, one one more thing that uh, I figured I'd I'd show show off real quick or speak to. You. Wrapping up the show, I know it's it's gone a little longer than usual already, uh, but I I did get my copy of the Final Rush by Robert E. Waters. Uh, this is the the sequel book. I think I mentioned it last uh, last time on the show. It it kind of officially come out. My copy has arrived, so I'm I'm geeked about that. Uh, really really fun Dreadball novel there, and then additionally I did get my copy of the Deep Space Pest Control. Uh, <laughs> advent calendar awesome uh, so so those maybe aren't familiar last year mantic did this barroom brawl mini game advent calendar thing where the whole idea is you you open up and you get pieces of like a bar room with your heroes and stuff and they have a fun little mini game that you can play here we have the same kind of concept in deep space uh and it looks like we have uh, our plucky little uh, Terraton mercenary Cairo, uh, and uh, it looks like maybe a, a handful of Veermen that he's trying to uh, to kick out an airlock. Uh, so uh, wait, is he push when you open the calendar? Does it, it says, push the Veermen out the, of the behind the twenty four airlocks? Uh, you'll find a daily <laughs> surprise, which builds all you need to play the exciting tactical game of Deep Space Pest Control. <laughs> Seal the hatches to stop the space rats and buy time for the civilians to escape. Uh, so That's the best. I didn't realize uh, that was the theme. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so clever. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to to popping this thing open. I can't wait for the end of November. I'll. I'll probably be posting as I open. I don't know if I'll do a video, but I'll I'll show what uh, what I get out of here each time, and then uh, and then I'll secretly spray paint them in my basement <laughs> instead of outside where I should be doing. With a mask. With a mask. With a mask. With a mask. Uh, the funny thing is, I could probably quickly prime models that are probably in this box now because I probably have them uh, as part of Star Saga. Um, but uh well yeah no i'll i'm gonna have a lot of fun with that and i'll keep you guys posted on how that goes and uh Sweet. it's it's for one to two players so uh maybe we can get together and get a game in uh, when, I, when it's all finished up all right and so with that as i always forget uh to to mention um with our our sponsorship from corvus games terrain we do have a coupon code with him uh, going on, so you can put in DZ Podcast 15 at checkout to get a 15% uh, off your your purchase. There, uh, we'll throw out uh, this episode will air on the 28th, uh, which is the Thursday before that's Black that's Friday. Thanksgiving. Uh, not Thanksgiving. Yeah, I was say, that's Thanksgiving. Yep. That that's is Thanksgiving. that is Thanksgiving. Turkey Day episode. Sweet. Turkey Day episode. Uh, we, I, I. I should have thought of it. Like, didn't have any turkey themed 
thing uh, to to discuss. Um, but that's okay. Not like a turkey reb character. You know, there is a guy that flies. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that counts. Uh, it's the craw, the craw <laughs> warrior. Um, but uh, but um, with that, uh, also I will I will shout out that Corvus does have uh, a special Black Friday coupon code that you can uh, check out on uh, his Facebook page and uh, and use that as checkout to get even more off the the deal. So uh, yeah, absolutely, it's it's a it's a great great time to be a fan of Mantic. I think. Oh yeah, it's always a good time to be a fan of Mantic. For yeah. sure. Uh, and so with that, I've already done our social media cast, so I'm just going to wrap us up and say, have a nice night, everybody. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Good seeing you guys. And hope everyone has a safe and wonderful holiday, a family gathering, and maybe playing some Halo with them. Bring, bring Halo Flashpoint to Thanksgiving is what I'm saying. Your family will thank you. And it may it may sound like they're thanking somebody else. It might be for the food, but it's it's really because you brought Halo Flashpoint. It's because of Master Chief. Thank you, Master Chief. <laughs> <laughs>